Hello there, and it's been a while since I've last done a video. I've uh, been very busy maintaining and administrating servers for SharePoint 2013, but also working on Office 2013 curriculum. So with that, this demonstration I'm doing today, which is based on Cascade dropdowns, I'm going to use InfoPath 2013. But the important thing is, it's done in exactly the same way in InfoPath 2010. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create secondary data connections and then I'm going to use those connections to create my cascade drop down list boxes. So what I have at the moment is I've got a, a form that contains just two drop down list boxes. One that will be displaying a list of all the departments in my company and then one that will display all the managers. Now these will be connected to two different SharePoint lists, but these data sources that you use can be anything. So I'm going to refer to the departments one as the primary source. It's the one that's going to provide all the departments to begin with. And then the managers will, at default, provide all the managers list, but I want them to filter and only show me the managers that correspond with the selected department. So let me show you an example of the data that I have in both those lists. And I have uh, departments. We have just four departments in there, finance, human resources, projects, and sales and marketing. And on the right hand side, I have that department listed again in what we call the code field. And the reason we've got them twice, this is very important when you're creating relationships, is you need a what we call a key field, a field that is duplicated in both record sets. So on the left-hand side in department, this is what we call the primary key. Uh, this field on the value uniquely defines each item in that list or record set. And on the right-hand side, it's foreign. It doesn't really belong to the team as such. It's not all about the team, but we use it to connect to the department to say this is where all the teams and their managers belong. They belong to each of those departments. So I'm going to be tying in the department on the left with the code field that's on the right. Now to do that I need to create a filter and that filter is going to say only show me the managers where the code field in the manager source on the right is equal to the department field that's in the department source on the on the left. And don't forget those are the two highlighted yellow areas. So here are my two drop down fields. These are already created and I've got these as fields in my form. I don't have any connections yet, so I'm going to go through and create the connections. This should be quite quick. I'm going to go to my data tab, into data connections, and as you can see I don't have any data connections at the moment. So I'm going to click Add and create a new connection to receive data in. That's coming in from a SharePoint library or list. And in particular, belongs in this team site, which will change obviously to suit the team site that you're working in. And inside that is all of the lists, and in particular, I'm looking at the departments list that you just seen. Now, as I said, the only thing I really want is the department field, so I'm just going to tick that. And what I can do in InfoPath 2010 and 2013 is I can choose to sort the resulting data by any field I want. So I'm going to have them sort in alphabetical order via the department. Okay. Just for speedy purposes for today, I'm going to store the copy locally, and that'll do. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to have it automatically grab the data by default, and click Finish. I'm going to do the same thing now for the managers. I'm going to have a, a data source that the managers can connect to. So I'm going to add a new one, and this is pretty much the same procedure. Connecting to a SharePoint library or list, to the same team site and this time I'm going to connect to the managers list. Now I only need really the manager 
but also the manager's account name because I'm going to use that for a later purpose which is just a user login but to connect the two I must supply that field that represents the department and in this case it's the code or department code and again I'm going to sort these in alphabetical order but this time via the manager's name so they're easy to find okay store a copy locally And that's it. I now have my two department and manager data sources. Now it's time to connect them. Now for drop-down list, this is quite straightforward. I go to each one, so I'll start with the departments, right mouse click, and choose drop-down list box properties. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the choices from an external data source from which I've already created. So there they are in this drop down menu here. So I'll just pick the correct one, which is for this side, the departments. I don't need to worry about the entries, but just to show you, this is kind of saying where does the location start where it's bragging the data from. So I'm going to get it from just basically saying it's going to this SharePoint list item, and that's where all the content inside is. Okay, and then I specify what I want to store into the drop down and what I want to display. Now, because I've created a custom list, the title field that you get by default has been renamed to department. So, whatever you call it in SharePoint and whatever you see it as in SharePoint, in InfoPath, it always finds the original naming convention, not the localized name. So, that's still the same title. That's fine. Click OK. I'm just going to make sure that works. So I'm going to preview my form. There it is. And I'm going to just click the drop down, and there are all the departments. Now I'm just going to do the same thing now to the managers. So close the preview, and I'm going to repeat that process for the managers. Control properties get choices from external data source. This time it's going to be the manager's source. And the same thing as before, I don't need to use the entries at all because it is pointing to the list at the top by default and therefore allow me to grab anything underneath. And at the moment I'm going to specify the value to store will be the manager's account details, but I want the users to actually display or see in the drop down list the manager's name. And I click OK. So now when I press F5 to preview the form, you'll see the department's works, and so does the managers. But you'll notice that the managers and the departments work independently of each other. They're not synchronized, they're not collaborated. So I'm getting all the managers regardless of which department I pick. I want it only to display the managers for the chosen department. So this is the bit that's new and a little bit cumbersome. So I need to go into the managers, as I showed in the diagram, and I want it to say only where the managers and the code field of the manager is equal to the value in the department that I've chosen here in this main form. So I bring up the properties. And this time I'm going to go into the entries And the reason for that is so I need to filter the data that I'm pulling into the managers. I'm going to add a new filter. And then on this left hand side, I choose the field. Now, because this is pointing by default to the data source that the control is connected to, in this case the managers or teams list, you'll see that it's showing me all those particular fields. I need it to look for the code. And where that code of the manager is equal to, click on the drop down box here. Now I need to now tell it to select a field or group from another data source. So I click on that. And I want it to equal the data source that's in my department's drop down box that's in this form, this main connection. So I click on the drop down arrow and choose main and then pick the departments because it's about the value that I pick not all the values that are in the departments list. So I click OK on all those boxes 
and it's time to test it. So I preview the form, choose a department such as finance, and if I choose a manager, there you go, it's only supplying the managers. There is one little tiny thing I will give you a, a helpful hint on is that if I pick another department, because that manager does not correspond with that department, the, the data source cannot find a filter value for it. So it, re it doesn't show display, no, it just shows the, the currently stored text in that box. And it will appear in there, which is quite confusing. Naturally, if you do pick another department, what you want the manager's control to do is empty, just go blank, so you can get the user to start again. And that's easily fixed. What I need to do is create a rule that as soon as you pick and change a department, it changes the manager to an empty drop down box. So I'm going to create a rule using my home tab, go to manage rules, make sure the department field is selected, and create a new rule to perform an action. So initialize managers. Now there's no condition. The idea is as soon as that a person changes the department and rules run on a change event. So as soon as I change the department I want this rule to run. So it's just a simple action and the action is to set a fields value. The field in question is the managers field and the value is just to be left blank. OK, I'll press F5, we'll test that now. So as before, I pick a department, it only gives me those two managers. I pick one, now if I change the department, the managers is empty and I can now choose an appropriate manager for that department. If only I could spell instructor. Oh well, that's it. That's how we create a cascade drop-down.